All right, now in this uh, video, we're going to look at the uh, idea of uh, finding the derivative of a function a to the x. So the base of the natural exponential function is e, but we can also generalize for just about any base as well. So that's what we're going to start with. We're going to start with uh, the base of an exponential function being any number whatsoever. Uh, any positive real number. So if a is a positive real number and the exponential function is denoted by a to the x, then a to the x, this is the same thing as, well I don't think there's really anything we can write in here other than we kind of know what that is. We're taking whatever a is and raising it to a power. So if a is 1, if your base is 1, then it's a constant function. Now, for the derivatives, those are a little bit more interesting. Here's the way the derivative works. Uh, for just a to the x, the derivative is going to be a to the x times the natural log of your base. So the derivative of a to the u, where the u is a differentiable function of x, is going to be a to the u times the natural log of a times r u prime for the chain rule. Let's put that into business here and see how we can do this. So if I have 2 to the x, for example, then its derivative is going to be 2 to the x times the natural log of 2. And if I have a differentiable function up there, 3x, for example, you see 3x up in there, then it's going to look a little something like this. dy over dx is going to be 2 to the 3x times the natural log of the base times the derivative of my inner function, 3x, which is just 3. Okay, now, folks, don't try to combine this. Just don't do it because you can't do it in any way, shape, or form other than maybe putting uh, these two together in a different order. You cannot combine with this one because of the power. So please be careful with that. I'd hate for you to make an algebraic mistake or try to invent rules of math that don't exist. So now we can generalize this for e to the x very easily. Okay, now watch this. So if the derivative of an exponential function is just going to be the same thing times the natural log of the base. Well, the natural log of the base in this case, this part works out to be 1. Natural log being, you know, e to what power gives you e? Well, the answer is 1. So because that works out to be 1, we don't really need to write that down as part of our answer. We could just say that the derivative of e to the x is, of course, just e to the x. A little surprising that a function is its own derivative. Now, if you got the chain rule at work here, then it's going to be e to the u times u prime, just like we know already. Okay, let's take a look at some examples. All right, so if I've got e to the 2x here, then the derivative of that thing is just going to be e to the 2x times 2. And once again, the only thing you can really do here is maybe put that 2 out in front so it looks like it makes a little bit more mathematical sense. Not much more you can do other than though that right there. All right, now this is a trick question in part B. Uh, the derivative of just e, guess what that is? That is going to be 0. And the reason why is because e is a constant. And the derivative of any constant number, of course, works out to be 0. All right, what about uh, e to the x third? Well, the derivative is going to be the same thing times the derivative of the inner function, and there's really nothing much more you can do than that right there. You're just going to have to stop the process at that point. All right, what about this one? Um, this is kind of an interesting uh, question. There's a couple of ways that you could approach this. Um, one way that you could approach it is to take it all at once, Another way would be to uh, separate it into two functions, and then at that point, you would have to do product rule. 
Now, I have a feeling the product rule would probably be a little bit more messy here, so it might be easier if we just followed the rules and just did e to the x plus x squared, uh, that should be a squared there, times 1 plus 2x as the derivative. Uh, I, th I think you're going to find that's going to wind up being something equivalent to what you see uh, if you did the product rule there. All right, now this is an interesting question. It says, at what point on the graph of that function does the tangent line have a slope of 21? Okay, so we're asking where is the slope equal to 21? Where is the derivative equal to 21? Where is dy over dx equal to 21? Well, in order to do that, we're going to have to take the derivative and solve out. So let's, let's take the derivative of this thing. And dy over dx is going to be 2 to the t times the natural log of 2. And then this constant, of course, is just going to drop out here. And I need to find where this thing is going to be equal to 21. Well, the way that we're going to do this is we're going to have to solve for t, which means I'm going to have to divide by the natural log of 2. And then I'm going to have to take the natural log just so I can loose this t and get it down to ground level here. So it's going to be the natural log of 21 over ln2. Boy, that's starting to get kind of ugly here. And then that's going to be equal to t times the natural log of 2. Well, if I do this one more time and divide, t is going to be the natural log of 21 divided by natural log 2 all over natural log 2. And at least you get an answer. It's not pretty, but you get an answer for sure. Okay, folks, that's what I've got for this particular video here.